This is John Lane, and you're watching Behind the Beats. I got into production. Um, it's kind of it's kind of an interesting story, but basically, I ever since I was a little kid, my my mom would play a lot of like Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, even like Johnny Mathis, Glenn Campbell records. And whenever I would listen to certain songs on the record. I would always hear like the notes that were inside the chords, like a lot of, especially when Stevie Wonder plays chords, I would always hear like the notes that are inside, as opposed to like the main melody and everything else. So uh, I would hum along to the song and my mom would always be listening and saying, what, what, what part of the song are you singing? And I would just say, I'm singing the, the part that you, you hear and I would sing along to it. So she sort of, found that to be a little bit of a gift um, on my end when I was really really young and um, I guess I sort of got into uh, really the, the 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 thick of production through college and I met this MC who was a uh, uh, in my one of my classes and we put a band together um, and I think what really sparked everything was listening to Jay Dilla and hearing uh, running for the first time on radio when they played real music back then. Um, that's when I really wanted to get into production. So, And I never had an MPC. I just came to this studio. This is my best friend's studio. studio. It's called Broad Sound. And started off with the Triton Rack. That's all he had was a Triton Rack and an Alesis drum machine and Cakewalk on a, on a PC. And it was just trial and error. I mean, I was just messing around trying to figure out how to put a beat together, but I was playing everything. I didn't know anything about sampling um, until I started listening to more Pete Rock and Premiere and Jay Dillon, and then I really started buying some more records and stuff. There's quite a few production influences. Um, obviously, obviously, Quincy Jones is a huge influence in my production as far as live, live music is concerned. Um, but I was really, really intrigued with the production of Hugh Padgham, who's done stuff for the police and Sting and um, uh, Peter Gabriel, Phil Collins, a lot of the guys who were big in the 80s. David Foster is another producer that I admire quite a bit. Um, obviously, when you, when you talk about beat makers, I think hands down Jay Dilla is one of my biggest influences, but I also have to name Pete Rock, DJ Premier, Diamond D, um, High Tech. Uh, I'll even go as far, I mean, I'll even say Battle Cat had a little bit of an influence in that. And a lot of the modern guys in the modern age right now, like uh, uh, Mad Lib, Kareem Riggins, Dame Funk, um, guys that are really pushing the envelope, those are the guys I'm really uh, influenced by. And I gotta mention one of the most popular producers right there, right out, out there right now is uh, Kanye West. If you were in a studio, 
with which with one MC and you had to do an album with that MC, who would it be? I would probably say Nas. Uh, I've always been intrigued with his flow and the things that he's been influenced um, in when he writes. But most of all, I really love his voice over beats, over certain beats. You know, Illmatic was, you know, to hear Pete and Premier and, and, and just hear his voice. I mean, that was so long ago and his voice has changed since then, but still, like, he's just got the right tone and the right, uh, his attitude is just so on point when it comes to rhyming over beats. I mean, he's, he's very, very, uh, you know, he's just very comfortable when he's rhyming. And I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people like to say that when somebody rhymes over a whack beat, it doesn't make a difference. So the beat maker has to make a dope beat in order to push the MC. But for Nas, I think it's different. I think Nas pushes the producer to, to make bigger beats and make more, put more substance in the music. Like when Pete Rock was doing what he was doing and Q-Tip was doing what he was doing on Illmatic. I mean, you could just hear the layering on the beats. Um, you know, it just wasn't, you know, in, in whose world, you know, in the world is yours. It just wasn't that loop. There was just so many things going on in that song. So I probably have to say Nas. I, I, I hate having to, having to count out like Q-Tip. Who, 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 who are your other two? My other two were going to be <clears throat> Q-Tip and, um, and Black Thought. Okay. Those are gonna be my other two. Okay. Um, Jay Z would probably be right under, under Black Thought. Okay. Your sampling process or your your beat making process. My beat making like, process. Do, do, do you um, start off listening to records? Or do you start off like with a drum pattern? No, nah, I I start. I I definitely. I I definitely um. Get a lot of my inspiration from from listening. I've always been taught as, as a musician that I, I, I'm a self-taught drummer. I'm a self-taught uh, musician. So a lot of times that's where most of your musicality sort of plays into, into things. Um, I didn't start learning how to read music until I got, until later on in high school and in the college. And that's when I started becoming a little bit more technical with my technique uh, and everything and learning how to read and it's one thing to to read music and to play what's on the paper but it's another thing to really listen so I've always I've never taken that for granted I've never forgotten about that so I, I like to go to the record stores and I just like to listen sometimes I'll buy a rack of records and I'll come home ready to make a beat and I'll just spend the rest of the night just listening to records. Um, I try not to pick up the needle and skip over. I, I try to listen to everything that's happening, even if it's a whack record. So I start off listening to records and then if I hear something that I think that, that, that I really, that, that's, that really pulls something out of me, then I'll just grab it and I'll put it right in the MPC. Um, and then what I'll do for a couple of minutes is I'll find something right around that sample, whether it's a few seconds before, a few minutes before, or a few seconds after, a few minutes afterwards. And I'll try to find something that's sort of in the same vein as the one sample that I picked out. And I'll either use it as a loop or I'll chop it up. And um, I never really have a sense of what is going to come out of it. Sometimes I'll think about what I want to do and I'll just pull the record out and I'll just do it and I'll be done in like five, ten minutes. But most of my most of the beats that I do, I, I, I'm listening first, I'm putting it in NPC, I'm chopping it up, and then once it's chopped up, I'll play around with the pads for a good number of minutes. Then when I feel like I, I have something, then I'll throw in a drum loop. And I'll put a drum loop down and throw the sample over it and then I got a beat. So you you don't program the, your drums you you do you do drum loops? 
Um, or it depends. I, on I, I do both. I, okay. I do both. I, I like to. I like to find uh, authentic sounding drums, and that's kind of biased, I guess, because I'm a drummer. But I like to find real authentic sounding sounding drums. So I'll pick a record that no one's heard heard of, or very little people have heard of, and try to find either a snare or a kick, or even like like a, a two beat loop, and then I'll try to use that as a loop. Um, I rarely use, uh, you know, sequence drums, um, only because I want my sound to stand alone from everybody else. I don't want to do what a lot of other people are doing. And I've been, uh, I sort of criticize myself as trying, trying to sound too much like Jay Dilla. Um, and that's very hard, especially when you're influenced by somebody um, as talented as that guy was. So I try to steer away from from that and try to create my own sound. So I try I, I try not to use the same drum sounds as a lot of other people. Okay, but being a drummer, have you have you ever sampled yourself? Yeah, playing that, drums. I, I never wanted to do it at first. That was actually a, a, an idea that Roddy Rod brought to my attention. Um, when I first met Roddy Rod, it was like 2002, and I was over at the studio and we were working on this album that never came out. I had a hip hop group in early 2000. And we were working on this album, and he was trying to figure out where, where my drum sounds were coming from. And then finally, one day, I brought in this motif, Motif 6, and I told him that I was using the drums out of there. And he was wondering, well, if you're a drummer, how come you're not sampling yourself? And I said, well, I never really thought about doing that. So I actually came here to this studio, and I set up my drums, and I just started playing loops. I would use, I, I had about, I have about five snares, all tuned differently. I got a high pitch drum, I got a low pitch drum, I got one of those um, uh, Elder Barge deep ballad drums, uh, snare drums, uh, different sounding kick drums, so I would just play loops all day and then take it home and then chop them up. So, so some of the sounds that you hear on some of my beat tapes and some of the uh, things that I've worked with other artists in the past are most likely me. Okay.